In the previous video, we already looked at a few ways to filter through data when we use uh, colon first and use colon last and also use nth child. That was a few of the ways that we could filter through elements on the page in order to get a hold of the ones that we wanted to. So we're just going to continue on with that in this video and look at a few more ways of filtering through elements in order to get a hold of the ones that we want to. So we have a div with an ID of container here and inside of it we have an unordered list and let's go down to the bottom here and let's start doing some stuff to it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm selecting all of the allies and then I'm using colon GT and then parentheses of five. And what this is going to do is it's going to select all of the items that are greater than item six, I believe. So this GT should be zero based. So zero will be the first one. So if we put a five here, we're actually talking about item six. And what we're going to do is we're going to change um, the text in the LI to what we have inside here, which is selected. So let me just um, refresh the right side and you'll see that everything greater um, than item six here um, had the text changed to selected. So just remember if you want anything bigger than item six, the sixth uh, item in your list, then you want to put GT5 in there um, because this is starting from zero. So let's just comment this one out now and uncomment the next one. And the next example what we're doing is we're selecting all of the allies that are less than five and changing the text to selected. Let's just refresh there and you'll see that LT5, that's still referring to item six. So everything less than that, we are changing the text to selected. In the next one here, we're using uh, EQ again. So I have LI colon EQ5 and we're just changing that text to selected. Um, let's see that on the right side. And you'll see that um, the item six was changed to selected. So you could actually um, use these in combination. If you wanted to do like greater than or equal to, um, I think we could do EQ5 and then we could just copy this bit right here. And maybe we can just do comma and then paste that. So we're selecting um, anything that's equal to five or less than five. And let's just try that out on the right side. And yep, that works. So um, that's one way that you could do equal or greater than, um, or of course you could just change the less than to like one greater or one less. In the next one, I'm doing something a little bit trickier. Let's just take a look at it. Um, let's refresh first to see how it works. And we're selecting all of the allies that are less than five. But then after that, we have another colon and we're putting odd and we're changing that selected. So this is gonna go from left and right First, we're going to select the, all of the ones that were less than five, which means um, less than item six. And then we're only going to select the odd ones. So you can see we only have two with selected now. So I don't know when you'd ever need to run into a situation where you'd need to do that. Um, but you can see how you can play around with these and uh, get different results. Let's just uncomment this one now. And in the next one, we're selecting all of the headers. So if we just do colon header, it's going to select all of the headers on the page going from H1 to H6. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a class of blink to it. In a lot of browsers, the blink tag doesn't work. And there's also some CSS in order to make things blink, but it's also not supported in a lot of browsers because um, they think it's annoying basically. But we can also make something blink with jQuery. And I just have a little function here that's gonna do that. So what this is doing is it's selecting everything with the class of blink, and then we're using each. And each is the way in jQuery that we can loop through a result set. So we could have many elements that have a class of blink on our page. So we want to run this function for each of them. And the way that we do that is we do dot each and then we pass a function to dot each. So what I'm doing here is I'm first caching this. And what this is referring to is the, um, the one that we're working on. So um, you know we could have a whole bunch of headers um, on our page and it's gonna loop through each of them and then this, in each case, is going to refer the, to the one that's um, being iterated over. And I'm just going to cache this as value inside this variable lm. And the reason why I want to cache that is because right after that we have set interval. And if I had, I'm just going to copy this here. If instead of lm I had this here, um, you can see that this is actually a function. So we're going to be running this function over and over again in order to return something. But we don't need to do that because we've already returned it. Um, one time so we don't need to uh, return it over and over again. So we're just going to cache that so we run this function one time, we return that element one time and we store it in this local variable lm 
And then whenever we want to refer to again, we are going to point to our cache version. Um, we're not going to run this function in order to jump into the DOM every time and find out some information that we already know. So inside this set interval function, the first thing we're doing is we're checking if the element's CSS visibility property is equal to hidden. And if it is equal to hidden, then we are going to change the vis visibility to visible or else we're going to change the visibility to hidden. So you can see um, this simple if check just sec checks if it's hidden. If it is, makes it visible. And if it finds out that it's visible, then it makes it hidden. And it's going to uh, run this function every 300 milliseconds. So let's just refresh the right side here. And you'll see that all of those headers are blinking now. And the reason why that they're blinking is that we've added the class of blink right here. I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to this now. We're going to comment out that one. And I'm going to uncomment the next one. And then the next one, we're selecting all of the headers again. But then I'm using a colon and I'm using not h3. So we select all of the headers, but then we told it that we didn't want the h3 ones, and then we're gonna add them in the class of blink. So let's just refresh here, and you'll see that only the first and the second ones are blinking because the first one is an h2, and the last one's an h4, and we told it not to do the h3. Um, another way to do this exact same thing is uh, in this next line right here, and we're using header, and then instead of using the colon, we use dot not, and then we pass it the h3, and then we add the class of blank. And if I refresh here, um, we won't see any change because those do the exact same thing.